Alright guys, look what I found. I found a dime. A dime sitting in this area as a spacer. So that's probably not a good sign. Probably going to be seized up. So what we're going to do is, we're going to try and loosen it. If we can't loosen it, I don't know what we're going to do. So, try and get a wrench on there. First I'm going to see if we can tighten it. Nope, we can't tighten it. So, I'm assuming that the threads are going to be stripped inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some channel locks and see if we can bust it loose. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to spray it with some PB Blaster. And then I'm going to leave it here for a little bit and see if it can soak up and penetrate inside there. So we'll leave that sitting there for a while come back to it. One eternity later. All right guys, the PB Blaster has been sitting there for a little while. We're gonna go ahead and try and break it loose with some channel locks. If the channel locks can't break it loose, I don't know what we're gonna do. It's seized up pretty good in there. Okay, so I can't get it off with channel lock, so I'm going to have to come back with another plane. Alright guys, so next thing we're going to try and do is we're going to try to heat it up with a little blowtorch. So, try and direct most of the heat towards the... Still doesn't want to come out. All right, guys, so I think I'm finally getting the bolt loose, but I think essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to take this bolt, loosen it up, and it's going to break inside of this. So if that does happen, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be doing it even bigger, more deadlier work. So what I'm doing is I'm just twisting this bolt barely. I mean, it's barely moving. Spray it with a little PB blaster. And then I'm going to try and rotate it back in a little bit. Try and get that solvent everywhere. And then I'm going to keep pulling it out. Oh, just keep going in and out like that. See if we can get it out without busting it. Alright guys, so here I am at the next step. I couldn't get the bolt out, so what I did is I took the back wheel off and the bolt's still in there, right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bolt, I'm gonna weld it right there. I'm gonna take this bolt, and I'm gonna weld it right there like that, right on the end, and then try and take it off like that, try and spin it out. So. See if that works. All 
All right, guys, so here's what actually happened. I ended up welding the bolt to the bolt on the swing arm, and it kept breaking off. Even with good penetrating welds, it would still break off. So the next thing I ended up doing was welding a socket onto it, which I'll show you right now. And that socket ended up breaking the top of the bolt off or the head of the bolt. So after that, I ended up drilling out the bolt completely just with a couple of drill bits. I started small and worked my way up into a bigger hole. And from there, I decided I was just going to tap that bigger hole and use a bigger bolt. So here's that. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just applying some anti-seize just to kind of lubricate and make sure everything goes good on the tap. And my method is I just want to take it real slow, just make sure everything is real straight as I'm going into the swing arm and everything should end up okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take that tap and I'm just going to slowly just ratchet it all the way in. And then once I seat it, I'm not going to seat the tap completely. I usually get maybe five sixths or seven eighths all the way up the tap and then I stop and then I'll slowly back it out. And usually when you slowly back it out, it usually the threads will free up and it'll be pretty easy to back out. And then if you want to, you can always just go slowly back in, slowly back out again, just to make sure your threads are lined up and there's no gunk in the way. So here I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm just gonna run that tap just back in, just run it back out, make sure there's nothing in the way. I just did it two times for this project, seemed to work out pretty good. All right guys, so here's what I did. I tapped out that hole to the outside diameter of our Healy coil. Um, I picked up these Healy coils at Napa. Basically what it is, is a thread insert. It has threads on the outside and threads on the inside. So you can tap out to that big outer diameter, but use a bolt on that smaller diameter. So I tapped it out. I made sure the thread pitch was the same as the Healy coil on the outside, and now I'm going to insert it into the swing arm using the tools provided with it. Um, that's basically all you got to do is get that Healy coil in that hole after you tap it out. So the next thing we're going to do, guys, is in order to remove your tool from the Healy coil, all you got to do is back it out. Just go counterclockwise on it, and then you're going to want to punch out the middle of the Healy coil. There's actually a little prong in there that will punch back and seat and let your bolt go all the way through. So I'm just going to take that little rod and I'm going to punch it out with my channel locks. So I went down to my local Ace Hardware and bought some uh, bolts and nuts. Um, I bought the bolt thread that is the inside thread of the Healy coil. And then I just bought some matching nuts for it. I just bought stainless steel just because um, of its corrosion resistance. Uh, you don't have to buy stainless steel. You can just buy the galvanized steel that was on there before. I just like to have that extra corrosion resistance for the water and the mud. And you can see I'm going to Loctite these just with the medium strength blue Loctite. That way if we ever do need to adjust it or get it off again, we are able to. All right, guys, so the next step we have to do is all we have to do is just tighten that nut down a little bit, tighten that bolt down in the swing arm a little bit to where we are able to get the uh, the rod that holds the wheel onto the bike. And then uh, we're just going to go ahead, mount up our rim and tire again, get our chain on, and uh, go ahead and adjust from there. And this is how your finished product's going to look. It's basically going to look like it was brand new. Um... My biggest thing I learned from this is it is a pain in the butt to do. So if you can avoid it, go ahead and avoid it. Uh, if you can have somebody else do it for cheap, have them do it for cheap. All in all, I enjoyed working on it. And uh, all I got to do from here is get my chain tightened up and I'll be ready to rock and roll.